Hey everyone, welcome to my watch list episode 28. This is a video podcast here on my YouTube channel called The Movie Vault. My name is Rob. We are going to talk about movies. We're going to specifically talk about everything I watched in December. Nice pile of stuff here beside me, guys. A mixture of physical media and cinema trips. So we're going to talk about all of those. Let's get straight into this one. Most of these physical media ones, guys, appeared on other, will have appeared on other videos on the channel. So I watched the 4K of Trading Places as part of my top five Christmas movies from my childhood. It's a fantastic looking 4K. I love this movie. It's hilarious. Dan Aykroyd and Eddie Murphy. Um, brilliant stuff. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. Uh, I cannot unsee the bloody photoshopped Dan Aykroyd smile <laughs> on the cover here. Jamie Lee Curtis is in here as well and uh, it's it's a really great movie. It all kind of takes place over Christmas and the New Year's and if you haven't seen it um, I do recommend checking out Trading Places. Another one in that top five Christmas movies guys National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation is one of my favorite Christmas movies ever. Chevy Chase, Beverly D'Angelo, you have Juliette Lewis in there as well. Um, lovely stuff here with the slip cover. This is a fantastic looking 4K from Warner Brothers. Really, really nice. Uh, DTS HD Master Audio 5.1 mix on this one. It does sound really good as well. Uh, I love it. Every Christmas I have to watch this and um, this year was no different. Um, really enjoy this one. I really love it. It's hilarious stuff. Uh, you know, the squirrel, the cat, like uh, the family arriving, everything. It's really, really great. Um, another one I would recommend if you've never seen it, please do give National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation a watch. A quick break from the Christmas movies, guys. Um, I picked up in CEX Airwolf the Complete Collection Blu-ray box set here. Um, so this is season 1, 2 and 3. The box set looks fantastic. I think I showed in a haul video. There's a little kind of mark there you might be able to see on the video if you're watching. There's a little mark on the top there, which I'm not really too pushed about. It kicks off with Airwolf, which is what I've known since I was a kid as Airwolf the movie. So as a kid, I knew episode 1, the pilot episode, which in the TV box set here is titled The Shadow of the Hawk. Episode 1, the pilot episode, was known here in Ireland as Airwolf the movie. Um, so they essentially made like the pilot a feature length kind of episode, called it the movie as an introduction to the show, and then the show kicks off. So I have Airwolf the movie as a separate Blu-ray here, guys, to the TV show. And I watched um, what I know as Airwolf the movie out of the TV box set, and it's not completely different but there's like there's some different edits and stuff in there because this would have been the pilot tv version so yeah a little bit of a different experience watching airwolf the movie this way around i prefer the movie version even the whole opening uh the whole opening of the like the movie compared to the to the pilot episode is like there's um there's music in the pilot episode that's not in the movie the movie just kind of is like nice and quiet and you're just kind of like ambient desert sound and stuff as the helicopter kind of starts up if you're familiar with what i'm talking about um and that's all gone in the tv pilot they have music in the synth music in over it and it just doesn't work for me and um, i prefer the movie version but anyways enough said the next watch up was airwolf the movie or airwolf the pilot episode Back on the Christmas buzz again, guys. Gremlins 4K for that top five Christmas uh, movies from my childhood video. I love Gremlins. It's fantastic. I have, you can't see it because it's right behind the chair here in this video, but I have a lot of Gremlins stuff here behind me. Um, I love Gremlins. It's fantastic. Uh, slip cover here. And this was the first time I watched this uh, 4K as well. I've had this in the collection for a good while and it looks really, really good. Looks well. Sounds good as well. Uh, Dolby DTS HD Master Audio on this one too. Um, Gremlins is fantastic. And you know, I can't really say much more about Gremlins, but uh, another recommendation if you haven't seen this one. A couple more movies, guys, just to round out these Christmas watches. Uh, Bruce Willis, Die Hard 4K. Had not watched Die Hard in so many years. I was uh, 
really pleasantly surprised when I revisit Die Hard. I always kind of think, oh man, yeah, I loved, I really loved the first Die Hard. And I think, to be honest with you, I really liked the second one and, and the third one, Die Hard with a Vengeance. I think I liked them a little bit more than the first one. I don't know how people feel about that here online. But um, yeah, it looks really well again. And uh, delighted to revisit Die Hard here again. If you haven't seen it, please do check it out. Last Christmas movie up, guys, I promise. Um, another one from that video. This is the 35th anniversary. First time on 4K, Scrooge, Bill Murray. I love this. This is one of my favourite Christmas movies ever. It's brilliant. Bill Murray is brilliant in this. You get the double artwork here on this 4K release, guys, with the slipcover. Um, it's just, it's amazing. It's one of those ones I have to watch every year as well. And I really love it. Fantastic stuff. Again, if you haven't seen it, um, please do give this a watch. Uh, it's from 1988, I believe. Yes, 1988. So, um, you know, as an 80s kid, this was one of the staples of my Christmas movie watches. Okay, so Christmas movies are out of the way, guys. I have my trusty iPad for this next little section because we have gone outside of the vault here to go and watch some movies. So this next watch was a Blu-ray. It was down in my girlfriend's house from her mini movie vault that she has. And we watched the Blu-ray of La La Land, uh, which I obviously do not own. <laughs> so... Here is the poster for this one, guys. La La Land. Now, I'm not known as a big musical guy at all. I will probably hold my hand up and say the only musical like that I actually like and have in the collection is The Blues Brothers, if you would consider that a musical movie. Um, La La Land. I like Ryan Gosling. Um, Gosling, Gosling, Gosling. I do this every video, guys. Gosling. I'm going with Gosling today. Um, Emma Stone I really like as well and you know we gave it a watch um i mean it was it was okay <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't the best it wasn't the worst you know we watched it and i thought okay i'm not one for the breaking into song you know the whole start of the movie i did not like at all and um, where they're on the kind of the freeway or the motorway you know sitting in traffic i didn't like that um ryan gosling is really cool i think he's really good uh, Emma Stone, as I said, same. No issues there. I think they're both really, really good, really talented actors. And yeah, I mean, it, I didn't hate it. I didn't love it. It was what it was. Uh, La La Land was the next one up. Another watch down in my girlfriend's, guys, from her mini movie vault once again. This was a movie I did know a little bit about through working in uh, the movie shops and um, it always kind of sold well the blu-ray and stuff and i always wondered why and i never watched it and now i can say that i did a movie called the florida project and um, starring willem dafoe and um, on the front here on well on the front on this poster guys you see the kind of young mother and the child and basically it's these what is it kind of like apartments let's loosely say apartments in florida where kind of you know, maybe people down on the look kind of live and Willem Dafoe was the kind of manager of that kind of apartment complex um, and just the relationship he has with all the kids and the tenants and stuff. Um, it was interesting. The little kids are little brats. Like, they would drive me mad. They're just going around, running amok the whole time. I mean, the movie was okay. Um, I think it's probably a nice kind of portrayal of what's kind of just outside Disneyland in Florida. I've never been. Uh, I can't say from experience, but just from what I've been told and what I know, um, the Florida Project is probably a pretty accurate uh, representation of that over there. So, um, yeah, jump in and let me know if you have seen the Florida Project and what did you think. To the cinema, guys, um, this was a work one, a work kind of... Uh, a, a work day? Uh, that doesn't even make sense. Priscilla, the new Sofia Coppola movie on 35mm film, we're running it in work. Uh, I get to view those. We get to make up the print and view the print before it goes to the public to make sure everything is okay. And I did so with Priscilla. Um, what can I say? Um, Callie, Callie Spence, Spencer, Spency, something like that is the is the lead actress's name. I apologize for that. Um, she is really, really good. She is fantastic in this. Um, Jacob Bellordi, I believe is the guy's name, who plays Elvis. Really good. Uh, 
I kind of came out of the movie with kind of a heavy feeling going like, whoa, that was a bit like, you know, two hours of that. <laughs> um, But yeah, I think it is good. I would definitely add it to my collection here once it comes out on physical. Um, Yeah, uh, let me know what you think, guys, if you have seen Priscilla as well. Another cinema trip, guys, we went to see, I apologize if I'm saying this wrong, Ari Karasmaki new movie Fallen Leaves uh, here's the poster two main characters kind of sitting in a cinema um, this was such a strange movie uh, and I kind of feel like it's one of those movies that just whew, went over my head and I did not get what it was about um, I don't believe I've seen any of his other movies uh, so um, yeah, I'm kind of left a little bit speechless after this one, guys. I don't really know what to make of it. I don't know that I fully got what it was about. Um, but it was a nice movie and kind of like a slow pace and not a lot of dialogue at times. And, you know, kind of that kind of feel to it. Um, so that was Fallen Leaves. One final cinema one here, guys, in this one. Again, a work one. We ran this on 35mm film on New Year's Eve. Uh, Sophia Coppola's Marie Antoinette, which I would have ran originally back in 2006, um, and I didn't get to see it. This was the first time I've ever seen this movie. Um, not big up on the history of Marie Antoinette and Louis the Fourteenth, is it? I'm not. You know, see, I don't even know. I probably got that wrong. Um, Kirsten Dunst is fantastic. Um, as always, you know, the soundtrack is really, really cool. I really like the soundtrack to this movie. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I did enjoy it. It was quite good. Um, there's a pretty cool cast in there. Like, Asia Argento popped up in there as well. Um, Jason Schwartzman's in there, obviously. Kirsten Dunst, as I mentioned. Um, and there's a few other kind of faces here and there. Like, Jamie Dornan's in there. Tom Hardy is in there. There's a good few people here and there pop up. And I thought, like, this is a pretty cool cast for, like, 2006. Um, and directed by Sofia Coppola, as I mentioned. So, yeah, it's a pretty cool one. I would recommend checking it out if you have not seen Marie Antoinette. Back to physical media, guys, with a fantastic one here. I did upload a quick short to YouTube here reviewing this one. This is RoboDoc, the creation of RoboCop. It's a four-part series. It's like almost five hours worth of stuff. It's almost six hours worth of stuff. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. I really loved it. I loved Robocop as a kid. We're talking original Robocop here, guys. Um, you know, fantastic. They talk to everybody. They talk to Paul Verhoeven. They talk to Peter Weller. They talk to Nancy Allen. They talk to uh, Courtwood Smith. Like, everybody is in there. Everybody is in there, guys. I'm probably missing people. Like, oh my God, who am I missing out of the main cast? Uh... Ronnie Cox is in there as well. Like everybody, everybody that was in the movie is in this. Literally everybody, except a few people who have passed away. Um, and it's really good. And it's two discs, which is nice. And there's like posters and art cards. And the making of Robocop was like chaos. And to kind of see and hear everyone talk about it was really, really cool to get some insight into that and like how they got this movie made. Um, the movie is brilliant. If you've never seen Robocop, I do recommend it. And this documentary, guys, I think it's streaming as well. And there's physical here. This is a dull disc special edition, is in stores and is online as well. So, uh, yeah, another one. Do check this one out, guys, if you have not seen it. Now, this one will be a video upcoming on the channel I believe uh, because I've already filmed it and I'm trying to think in my brain when have I scheduled these videos to upload yes I believe this will be after this video and um, my girlfriend got me the Critters Blu-ray collection for Christmas and I've never seen any of the Critters movies and I made an epic video of me watching all of these for the first time and I really love the video guys um, I my speech is a little bit weird in that video. I got new dentures, and I that was the first video I made since I got them. So uh, I not I can really notice my speech is a little bit off in that video. But um, yeah, if you can get through that, then like please check out that video. It's really funny to watch the critters movies for the first time. Um, and I don't want to say any more here about them because uh, it will all be said in that video. 
Another Christmas gift, guys, my mum and dad got me this big placebo live kind of vinyl box set that also included this live Blu-ray. This is what you wanted live from Mexico City. Um, and I did watch this uh, on Christmas Day, I think, actually. Um, it's a really cool set list if you're interested in placebo. Um, I believe the box set is sold out, so you won't be able to get a hold of it now, unfortunately. Um, it looks, it's a nice Blu-ray presentation. However, it's only stereo, and I kind of feel like they could do something a little bit better uh, with kind of live music Blu-rays. They could do some kind of 5.1 mix or something on them. But uh, yeah, next one up. Um, again, you won't get a hold of it because it's sold out, but if you have it and you haven't watched it, do check this one out, guys. I feel bad saying this, guys, but the next one up is, is another video coming to the channel. Um, I have a lot of movies here in the collection. As you can see, like, this is only a portion of it. You know, the the collection goes up to the ceiling and completely around, you know, behind the camera. Um, you've seen that room tour. Uh, and if you haven't, check it out and then you can kind of see what I'm talking about here. There's a lot of movies in the collection. DVD is the main kind of portion of my movie here i think dvd is about 1200 in about like a two and a half thousand movie collection here for me personally and a lot of those dvds i've just never gotten around to watch and some of them have been sitting in the collection for a very 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 long time and i'm trying to do a series of videos where i'm trying to catch up on these movies and this next movie was part of that and is a video coming on the channel it's a movie that's recently gone to Blu-ray. Uh, it's a movie called Two Days in the Valley. and uh, It's a Pulp Fiction-esque kind of, you know, neo-noir thriller, comedy kind of style, 1996. Um, there's a really cool cast in this one, guys. Danny Aiello, Jeff Daniels, Terry Hatcher, Glenn Headley, Peter Horton, Martin Massoon, Paul Mazursky, James Spader, Eric Stoltz. And I'm literally like repeating what I said in the video. And a young Charlize Theron on the cover here. Um, it, like I don't want to talk about it anymore guys. Because it is in the video. And I hate doing that. Like I don't want to talk about this. Because you're going to have to watch this other video. But like this has sat in the collection for a very long time. Um, so it deserves its own video. But uh, this is one I can recommend. If you see this out and about. Grab it and have a look at Two Days in the Valley. Last one on this episode guys. This was the last movie I watched in December 2023 this was a 4k pickup when I was in Barcelona last time so the cover is in Spanish but this is the 1985 Val Kilmer movie called Real Genius uh, covers in Spanish there as I mentioned but this is really cool and really funny and Val Kilmer is fantastic and I watched this going like oh my god I want to revisit so many Val Kilmer movies Um, he's brilliant and it's hilarious uh, the cover is a little misleading, let me say. Like, Einstein is on the cover here with Val Kilmer, and I kind of thought, oh, is this some kind of, like, time travel, like, 80s wacky science time travel movie? Uh, no, it's not at all. <laughs> it's not purely for cover art purposes only. Um, the Blu-ray is included as well, guys, in this set. And, uh, yeah, the 4K looks really, really good and sounds really good, and it's hilarious and... Um, Oh my god, they're, like the cast in this is great as well. William Atherton is in there, you know, like the bad guy from like almost every 80s movie. Ghostbusters, Die Hard, he's, he's, he's in here as well. Um, Marty Coolidge directs this one. Um, Gabe Garrett's in here. Um, you know, there is other people and I just can't think of them right now. Looking at the back of the box. But uh, Real Genius was definitely one I would recommend. If you're looking for a Val Kilmer 80s, mid 80s kind of comedy Real Genius is one for your list. There you go, guys. That was 16 movies I watched throughout December. I'm happy to get another 16 onto the watch list here. As always, I have my trusty little black notebook here, guys. I keep track of the order I watch movies in, um, what format they are, when they've watched them. And I am happy to say that 2023 was a record. 2022, I watched 105 movies. 2023 i watched 153 so i'm really happy with that and that's a mixture of 4k blu-ray dvd streaming digital cinema digital cinema 35 mil cinema 70 mil cinema and um, so many trips in there 
and January is already off to a good start here, guys. And you will hear from me at the end of January about my January watch list. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. Uh, if you like it, please give it a thumbs up. That's the number one way you can support the channel here. Don't forget to hit the little bell to get subscribed to the channel so you'll get notified as soon as I post those videos. Um, importantly, jump in the comments down below, guys. I love hearing from you guys. Have you seen any of these movies I've watched? What do you watch in December? I know we're already in January and some people want to just get away from Christmas. But let me know, uh, what do you watch? Do you have kind of certain movies you must watch every December coming into Christmas? Uh, like I mentioned, a few of those there. And then you guys know my watch list by now, you know, and if you haven't, you can go back through previous episodes and check out kind of I watch anything and everything literally. So um, I know I always kind of keep you guys on your toes with these watch lists here. But uh, yeah, that's going to do it, guys. Um, as always, stay safe and I'll talk to you on the next one.